So here's my quick video guide to the immune system. Let's start off by looking at the different types of white blood cells. So you've got phagocytes, you've got neutrophils which go around in the blood and monocytes and macrophages uh, in the lymph system. Over here, we've got the lymphocytes. You've got two different types, T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. And uh, you've got different versions of each of those. In the T lymphocytes, you've got killer cells, helper cells, memory cells, and suppressor cells. And on the B side, we've got plasma cells and memory cells. So how are all these cells involved in the immune response? Well, first of all, we're gonna look at the non-specific immune response. So this is what happens quickly when you get an infection. This happens straight away but it is completely non-specific. It just attacks anything that's foreign, anything with an antigen on it, on its surface, which is detected as a, a, a foreign cell, it will attack. And there is no long-term immunity. There's no immunological memory with this. So it's quite helpful for quick responses, but not long-term immunity. Um, one of the things that can happen is phagocytosis. So these phagocytes here, the neutrophils and macrophages, they could do a process called phagocytosis, where they engulf the pathogen um, into what's called a phagosome via endocytosis, and then lysosomes uh, are released um, into that phagosome, which release lysozyme enzymes to break down the pathogen. You can also have the inflammatory response, inflammation, where histamines are released, you get swelling, the capillaries are become leaky at the area there, it gets hot, uh, and it's what sort of typically you, you will uh, happen when you get something in foreign inside your body. And it's a quick way of um, encouraging the white blood cells to fight it off there. But I said, this is non-specific. So how do we end up with proper specific immune response and immunological memory? Well, in that case, we need to use the lymphocytes. So let's move over to here. Now, what can happen in the specific immune response is that one of those macrophages from the phagocytosis, it can incorporate the antigens from the pathogen onto its surface and become what we call an antigen presenting cell, an APC. And so it almost puts the antigen on its surface like a little flag, which allows for something called clonal selection. Clonal selection is when the body needs to find the correct T helper cell, which recept the receptor will bind to that particular antigen because lymphocytes are specific to specific antigens and so you've got to find the right one now this can take a few days so the specific immune response is a much slower response but once you do find the right t helper cell it will release little chemicals called cytokines which go off and stimulate different processes to occur in the specific immune response one of the things it can do is it can move on to what we call the cell mediated immune response and here, what you've got is that correct T helper cell will then be cloned thousands of times. It's what we call clonal expansion. And the cell divides by mitosis and it will turn into different types of T cells. Some of them will become memory cells so that they, you can store that uh, immunological memory long term if you get the same infection again. Some become more T helper cells which will go back and be involved again in stimulating further parts of the immune response. But a lot of them will become these T killer cells, cytotoxic T killer cells. And what these do is they can release uh, chemicals which can um, uh, destroy cells that have already become infected. So they can release things like hydrogen peroxide, which can then destroy infected cells. So that's why they're called T killer cells. If we move over to this side, uh, we're gonna look at something called the humoral immunity. Now, this is when the antigens are outside of body cells. Body cells are not infected at this point. The pathogen is just floating around, let's say, in the blood. And those activated T helper cells, which have been uh, formed from the uh, clonal selection process, once we've got that right T helper cell, it can then find a corresponding uh, beta cell, which have the, the correct antibody receptors on its surface to match up. And again, once that process has happened, clonal selection, we can then do clonal expansion and we get a huge amount of mitosis happening to make lots of beta plasma cells, okay? B plasma cells. Plasma cells are the ones that are going to make all the antibodies, okay? These antibodies are specific to that particular antigen on the surface of the pathogen and they're gonna work to completely eradicate that infection. It will also make some 
B memory cells, a bit like we had the, the T memory cells, so that you've got long-term immune response. What do antibodies do? Well, antibodies are these, tire, are these small little uh, proteins, uh, and they've got variable regions at the top. They've got this Y shape. The variable region is the bit that will change and it will bind to the antigens. And when they bind to antigens, various things can happen. Agglutination, opsonization, precipitation and lysis. All of these processes, I'm not going to go into them now, but they all help uh, make that pathogen um, more useless. It will stop infection and it will destroy them uh, uh, fundamentally. Once you've got immunological memory, you've then got the situation where you can have the secondary immune response. The first part of this graph shows the primary immune response. The first infection happens on day zero, but it takes a good five days for the specific immune response to happen and for antibody concentration to build up, which is what's shown on the y-axis. So it takes a while for that graph to get going, uh, and then hopefully you get better and the antibodies go down a bit. Let's say you get a second infection uh, a month or two later. Look how much quicker the graph shoots up uh, and you get a huge uh, increase in antibody production very rapidly. Uh, and that's what we call the secondary immune response. And that is because of the immunological memory cells that you have got through the specific immune response.